Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and today we are working on another pattern reading class and we are crocheting today. This pattern is courtesy of Leisure Arts and we are looking at the book I Can't Believe I'm Crocheting. This is the updated edition and we're going to be working on this dishcloth pattern here in the back. There is a solid and a striped version and so we're going to cover both of those. If you click down in the link below, you will find the link to get your own book. You can get a digital or a, um, a hard copy. And uh, thank you so much to Leisure Arts for providing this to us. We are going to go through how to read a pattern and then we're actually going to do a crochet along. So let's get started. Okay, so today in the I Can't Believe I'm Crocheting book, we are going to be working on the dishcloth pattern. And this is on page number 48 of the edition I'm working on. And we will be working on um, making a stripe or a solid. So there are instructions for both. So the dishcloth pattern actually fits on one page. And we're going to go through what you need. Now the finish size is about 10 and a half by 10 inches or 26 and a half centimeters by 25 and a half centimeters. Give or take, it's pretty forgiving. I think my dimensions were near that. The materials we want is 100% cotton medium weight yarn, which is a number four. And that is uh, two and a half ounces or 120 yards. And that is uh, for a solid, which you're gonna need one ball. And then if you wanna do a striped version, you're gonna need a ball of each color that you wanna work with. I mean, if you wanna do three colors, then you'll just need more balls than that, or you'll have to have some partial leftovers from another project. The uh, crochet hook that you're gonna use is a size H or a five millimeter, or the size you need to get the gauge that is desired. So um, you wanna use a, um, a different hook uh, for a thicker material or a thinner material. So I am actually going to recommend that you get a size I hook as well, which is a 5.5 millimeter, and it's going to help you work on the chain to make it looser, especially if you're a beginner. I think it's a nice way to do it. It's kind of a knitting trick. So uh, this talks about, so we talked about the materials, and then it talks about the gauge. And again, the gauge is in the pattern how many stitches in the main stitch pattern or the one called out is in an inch or three inches or whatever they're calling out. This one is calling out three inches. So they're telling you that there are 12 half double crochet, which is HDC, and seven rows in a three by three area. So three inches across is 12 half double crochet, and seven rows down is three inches in half double crochet. The gauge swatch, uh, if you make a, um, if you cast on and make the width uh, in three inches high, you should be able to get this same gauge. And um, you work the same uh, as dishcloth for seven rows. So that should get you, so seven rows should get you three inches high. So you'll, you should know by the time you hit your seventh row if your pattern is going well, especially if you're going on a solid, and then you could just continue on instead of making like a super tiny swatch. Okay, so now they're gonna give you uh, the information for the striped only. Now when you're looking at a pattern and it has multiple, um, multiple types of ways that you can do a project, I wanna go ahead and go through the whole thing, reading it first before you just jump on right in. Now it's telling you sequencing. This is where you would um, change colors and things like that. But the main pattern is down here below. So let's go through and read this together, and then we'll go through how to actually start it. Okay, so we're looking at the stripe sequence only. The color sequence is two rows of each, the yellow and the white. Now, they're saying on figure 46A of page 34 is where they're going to talk about um, color sequencing and changing. So we can jump over there in a moment. Now you're gonna switch from white and yellow. Five times carrying the color not being used loosely along the edge. So we're gonna run it up as we go along one edge. So every other row is where you would switch to the next color, you'll grab that. And we will show that. You're gonna to change to white at the end of row 22 and cut yellow. 
Okay, so uh, chain 41 loosely. This is where it starts talking about the actual pattern of what we're actually going to start doing. That's the foundation chain. And then we start talking about row one. But before we go further, let's skip over to what this page is talking about. We don't want to keep passing up all these directions. So figure 46A on page 34. Okay, 46A. Now this is talking about joining within a stitch color, okay? So there's different ways to join. Now, what we're gonna do is join the color right at the end of our row so that when we go on to the next row, we don't have any knots and things like that. So we're going to, um, before you pull through your last stitch through the last remaining loops on your hook, you pull in the new color, okay? You see this here? Okay, so we're gonna pull that in. And now this is showing in the middle of a row, but you can do this at the end of a row as well. And so they walk through that. And then joining with a slip stitch, you can, if you're at the end of, say you're at the end of your project and you want to add on a contrasting color around the edge of your um, dishcloth or baby blanket or whatever, then you would put a slip knot on your hook and then put your crochet hook in and then pull in the new color and just start going around. So that's how you would join on new color if you wanted to use a slip stitch. What happens when you have a slip stitch is you're going to have this little knot here. So if you can, try and join within the stitch and then you'll avoid this extra little bump if that's available to you. Okay, so we'll go over how to do it this way, but all of these pictures in here are very colorful. They lay it out. Um, they, the, the pictures are easy to be seen, so it's not like they're black and white and the instructions are clear. And I do want to point out that in this book as well, I'll have a review, but they also talk about right and left handed. See, they're, they're showing uh, which way to do it right and left handed. So it's really nice. Okay, so we're going to walk through this and then we'll actually do it. So chain 41 loosely, the CH is chain. Okay, so if you don't know abbreviation, you can flip on over to page 33 and you can see that there is crochet terminology and it also um, switches over and tells you the international terminology as well. So this helpful charts area will also talk about yarn weight and um, stitches per inch and um, average hook size and things like that also. Um, crochet hooks in the US and then in the metric system for millimeters. So this is a great little handy chart here. Okay, so we're going to chain 41 loosely and I always say go up um, a little bit on your hook and um, because I tend to do it kind of tight. So um, row one is going to be on the right side of your work and it's going to have double crochet in the third CH, which is the chain from the hook. And then it says two skipped chains count as first half double crochet. And in each chain across, um, you're gonna do 40 half double crochet. So um, after you put it in the first, after you skip these um, two first chains, then um, they'll kind of go vertical on you and then every chain after you're going to be using half double crochet you won't have to skip anything else so you don't have to worry you know did I skip enough or too little okay and then rows tw 2 through 22 this would count if you were doing a solid now it does count for stripe too except every um, two rows that you complete then you would change colors because it talks about it up here in the sequence so it says rows 2 through 22 chain 2 counts as first half double crochet, and then turn, that means you're gonna flip it. And then see the star here? This means that there's going to be a repeat that goes back up to this star. So this is something that you wanna notice. And then it says HTC half double crochet in back loop only. Okay, and we're gonna cover how to do that. Of next half double crochet. And then in figure 49, page 35, it actually will show you very clearly how to do it. And we'll look at that in a second. Half double crochet in the front loop only of next HDC. Repeat from the star. So 
you'll keep going here until you get to, it says across to half, last half double crochet, half double crochet in last half double crochet. So all this means is when you have one stitch left, you're going to make a half double crochet as normal. So you're going to do this, go back and forth between the back loop and the front loop all the way across until you get to the last half double crochet and then you're going to half double crochet in the last half double crochet of the previous row. It doesn't actually say of the previous row, but it just means from the row before you're going to do a full half double crochet. That means you're going to go through both loops. Let's talk about this here. Let's go over to this page here and we will um, look at it first before we do it. So page 35. So page 35, we're looking at the back or front loop only. So when your instructions read work back loops only or front loops only, work in those loops as indicated by this arrow here. Okay, otherwise you go under both loops. Now both loops is when you're looking at your row, these two nice soft loops that are on the top of your knitting, you'll put your hook through and then work your stitch. Now, if you're working in the back, you just put your hook in right in between here, go through and then make your stitch. If you're going on the front, then you go from under here and then make your stitch. So this is the front, it's like a bump. So the front bump of that, um, the front of this loop here or the back of this loop here, and then this is going through both. Okay. Now, um, it says at the bottom of these instructions, solid only, do not finish off. Okay. This finish off is actually referring to edging. You don't need to add an edge. However, you can. I'm going to tell you that you can if you want to. It just doesn't say that on here. So um, when you add this edging, it's going to make it a slightly larger. So you could go around to make it larger if you want to or if you just want to add an accent. I'm going to show you what one looks like with and without it. Now the solid, you're just continuing this as it is. If not, you're going to refer to the striped only sequence. So after you repeat, after you do row one and then row two, you'll chain and then you'll change colors. So now let's look at the edging. Of course, if you're doing the solid, you're going to work in your, um, your beginning strand and your ending strand, that straggler, and you'll, you'll weave that in. But when it's talking about finishing off, that's an edge. Okay, so round one, you're going to chain. So once you end your, um, once you end this here, you'll add in the next color, and you're going to chain one, and then turn the work, and you're going to do three single crochet. SC is single crochet in the first half double crochet, and then you're going to single crochet in each half double crochet across to the very last half double crochet. Then you single crochet in the very last one, that same one, which is in the corner, and then see single crochet across evenly um, end uh, of the rows. And then it talks about edging in page 44. And then working in the free loops of the beginning chain, and then you save this page, then you're going to follow the rest of the instructions, which is three single crochet in the first chain, single crochet in the next 38 chains, single crochet in next chain, and then single crochet across evenly, uh, uh, across evenly across end of rows, join with slip stitch to the first single crochet and finish off. So we're going to do just that. Now <clears throat> I'm right-handed and I'm going to make this video right-handed, but I'm going to attempt to make a left-handed video. So I'm not gonna put the instructions up across the screen as we grow, go across. You'll just have to listen to the instructions and I'm gonna work on getting some closed captions up. So when I do my left-handed video, it's not gonna have information across the screen unless you look at closed captions. So you'll have to turn those on because I want the lefties to feel comfortable and be able to do it as well. I'm only going to do this for the crochet videos, I believe, so I want you to be able to see that. Also, because the book also will talk about left-handed instructions, I think it is um, a good thing to do. So, um, and then of course, in the end, um, you're just going to weave in 
any loose ends. It doesn't actually state that on here, but you're going to weave those in. Okay, so let's get started and we are going to pull out our supplies. And uh, I'm using in this sample back here, it's technically my solid, but it's a self-striping. So this is sugar and cream stripes and this particular color is called natural stripes. So um, for your solid, just pick one ball. If you want to do something with uh, two colors, then um, pick your solid and uh, another solid, or this is a variegated, this is the original sugar and cream. Um, I'll have to find the color for this green one, uh, but this particular one is um, chocolate, um, chocolate ombre. Okay, so we're going to uh, start working on this, but I do wanna show you that the pattern really quickly before I start flipping our image. The pattern right here shows you how they're going from yellow to white, yellow to white, and then the crochet is the white. So what I wanna do is show you that you can vary from the pattern. So I flipped it for you to show you that the, the one that has more color is on the outside, and then I put the white on the inside. So I start with the white instead, and then um, have the one with the color here. So see how it's just opposite? Okay. so just want to encourage you that's okay <laughs> all right okay so we're gonna start chaining and I just want to remind you that you need a 5.0 millimeter or an H hook and I'm going to start and you're supposed to do it loosely so I'm actually gonna start my chain just with this 5.5 millimeter which is an I hook so that I can get it nice and loose because I tend to be a little tight so we're going to um, start with our slip knot, put that on our hook, okay? And we're gonna chain 41 loosely. Okay, one, two, three, Okay, so just continue on until you get to the number that you need, 41. I'm going to make it 21 because I'm going to make a small sample. So continue, pause your video, and I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, I have chained mine, and I'm going to switch out the hooks. Put in my 5.0. And then now we're going to um, half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So um, that means you're skipping two. Uh, half double crochet, you're going to wrap the yarn around and we're gonna go count these stitches here. So we've got, now you don't count the one that's on your hook, but it's the, the um, you're gonna skip. So we've got one, two, and then here's the third one, but we need to rotate this so that we've got the two stitches at the top. So we've got one, two, and then I'm gonna go into this stitch here. Okay, so I've got both these stitches here on the top. Okay, and then I pull through one. So I had yarned over, pulled through one, and now we're gonna yarn over again, and we're gonna pull through all three. So we've got one, two, and then three. Okay, so that is um, this skipped chain, two chain areas is going to count as your first half double crochet, and then you've got this uh, half double crochet here. So we've got, we're going to go ahead and half double crochet again, and we're going to go across. Now that we've turned our chain enough to where we can see all the two bumps at the top, it'll be easier to go in. So um, if you're still learning how to crochet, once you um, once you put that first one in, you can see where you went into your chain, so you want to go to the very next one. So you're going to work in that stitch here, yarn over, pull it through like that, and then yarn over again and pull through all three. One, two, three, like that. Let's so yarn over again and go into the next stitch. Put that in, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, 
pull through all three. One, two, three. Okay? Let's see if we can get a better view. Okay? Yarn over. Put it into this stitch here. See how you've got two bumps on top? Yarn over and pull it through. Yarn over and pull it through. One, two, three. Okay, so you're going to continue going across your whole chain and you will get half double crochets across the entire thing. The way that you count to make sure that you got them is um, you can see, I'll try to get a few on here, I'll show you. Okay, so you can count them and say that's one, that's two, see how it, where it makes this little bump and it joins to the next one, so you can just count one two, three, four, five, six, and that first one counts as seven. Okay, so continue, pause your video, and we'll meet you back in a moment. Continue half double crochet across. And if you need to uh, learn how to do the stitch again, just uh, rewind your video and uh, watch it again. Okay, we have come to the end of our row and I'm not going into this first slip knot because that didn't count as my first chain. And we want to chain up one, two, and if you need techniques uh, on how to do a chain and half double crochet or any other basic stitches, I do have a playlist for crochet on my main channel. I will put a link down below to the different techniques that are needed. So if you need a slower video, you're welcome to go to that. I'm just trying to go a little bit faster for this one. It is slow, but it's um, if you're an absolute beginner, you might want something um, to work on half double crochets and get some practice first. Okay, so now that we've chained, we're going to go on to row two. So we're gonna turn our work, okay? And then we're going to go immediately into the back of the loop. So go ahead and yarn over. Okay, we're looking at this close up. And if you look at the top of your stitches, you're going to notice that you've got two loops. See these loops across here? This is the back and this is the front. So we want to go into this very first one here. Okay, just in the very back, yarn over, pull through, and pull through all three, okay? So that's the first one. Now we're going to switch to the front. Okay, so look again. Go into the first. That's the front loop. Pull through and pull through again. One, two, three. All right. Yarn over. Now we're going to go to the back. So it's really going to pull, or at least when I do it, it really pulls on that front loop. So you can really kind of tell if you'll just tug on your work here, you can tell if you went into the back of the front last and you're just going to alternate. It seems a little bit more difficult when you're reading the pattern, but it really isn't. So you're just alternating back and forth between the front and the back. Okay, so this one I can tell that it's sort of making the front of this stitch small, but I know it's coming from the back. So I'm going to go into the next one and yarn over and pull through the whole thing again. All right, now you see the one in the front being pulled. We're going to go to the back and pull through. Okay, and now to the front again. Make sure you're not going into the back of a stitch and then the front of the same one. You want to progressively go down the line. And don't worry about pulling out that stitch so much because as you go, it will even up. Okay, so let's just keep going across. All right, I did the back, now I'm doing the front. Half double crochet. All right, go to the back, half double crochet. Don't forget to yarn over before you start your half double crochet. What's really nice about this stitch is it builds up a, um, it builds up faster than say a single crochet does. And it's not as tall and gappy as a double crochet, okay? or trouble. Okay, so working my way across, 
working my way across just making sure that I am going in the back and the front and alternating not really counting I'm just making sure I'm not missing something so occasionally if I'm uh, distracted say I'm um, look look at that I missed um, part of the strand for the cotton let me do that again there we go I split it okay when I was saying about being distracted <laughs> occasionally when I'm distracted say I'm watching a, a video or I'm riding along in a car um, I might not alternate correctly and so I examine my row before I finish or as I'm going along to make sure that um, I didn't uh, put two backs next to each other or two fronts so with this one you can tell because it's literally back and forth every stitch you can tell if you accidentally uh, did it wrong so you'll really be able to tell this first one it's harder but um, as you go you'll the pattern will stand out let's look at this one see how you can tell that these are all on the front and then there's something that pushes to the back so when we pull from the back it actually pushes the fabric to the back and then we pull from the front it pushes it front so it has this really nice ridged look it has a great look but it's actually very useful for making a dishcloth all right let's continue okay I encourage you I'm almost finished with this little sample here go ahead and pause your video if you're not at the end and we'll be back in a moment and I'll talk about this latch last stitch okay so you come down to the end you're like I don't know if I have two stitches left or one so um, pinch on this end here this is where you have the turning chain and you'll be able to feel it's harder than it, well, it feels different than these other stitches here. So examine your stitches. You still have the two going across the top, but you're not going to have enough to go along the side. If you do, you're going to start rounding your piece. So this one, we're doing a regular half double crochet. If you remember from the instructions earlier, and if you don't, just rewind your video. But um, if you remember, we're supposed to go through both loops. So go ahead and pull through both of those loops. Just do a regular half double crochet uh, and... I'm showing you wrong. I've got to yarn over. So let's yarn over. We're going to pull through both loops, yarn over again, pull through, and we're going to do a regular half double crochet. Okay, so now see how it's nice and squared up? Okay, so now that we've gone to the end, we're going to chain up two, one, two, and we're going to turn and continue. So if you are going to make a solid standard dishcloth just like the one in the back here then you will continue on in the same stitch the same way we did it here if you would like to make the stripes then um, continue on in your video now if you're done when you're done you would end up weaving in these loose ends and then the one when we finish here if you want to learn how to fasten it off after you're done with that last stitch you're just going to pull through and not chain up and cut your yarn and weave it in now again this looks like stripes it's not it's a striped yarn so you can do it in a completely solid white or whatever color you want to do so con let's continue on I'm going to actually turn this back around and I'm going to show you how to change color okay we're at the end of our row we still have one half double crochet to go forward with and uh, if you we're looking at the solid video just go ahead and pull out that last stitch and we're going to show you how to change color at the end of row two only so go ahead and grab your other color and we're going to pull through like a yarn over with this at the very end of our half double crochet so go ahead and yarn over with the same color that you've been working on go through those two loops and pull through your yarn over until you have three loops now no matter what you're working on if this was a single crochet or or a double crochet or whatever get all the loops on here before you're pulling through your final loop so instead of having a final loop of that color you're going to make your final loop this new color so go ahead and put that on here and then loop it through all three okay now we have actually finished that out nicely and then when um, we're going to um, let this uh, get pulled up on the next row I'll show you how to flip out and get the new um, color up there so now we'll go ahead and 
chain up. And if you're wondering, I just left a nice long tail, um, but we um, will trap that in there, uh, the beginning tail. Okay, so we've chained up and then I'm gonna turn the work. Take your tail of your new color and you're gonna lay it along the top here and we're gonna trap that in. Now you can weave it in later if you want to as well. So we're going to uh, yarn over and we'll um, go ahead and start going into this first stitch up here. Okay, so go to the back of the work. Okay, and then we're gonna pull through. Be sure and lay this yarn up top and then pull through all three. And now it's going to get trapped in there in between these two stitches here. So I'm going to go ahead and yarn over and we're going to go through the front of the next stitch. If you have to lay this straggler at the back, then do that. So go through the next stitch and go through the front and then grab it in and then go all the way through. Now this little straggler thing has now worked its way between the two stitches. Now move it to the front. Okay, yarn over and then go into the back of that stitch just like you were doing before. Pull through all three. Okay, and now you can move that yarn to the back again. So just continue kind of moving it along there and it will trap itself in for you. So uh, now we're going to go to the front again, yarn over, pull through. Let's do that again. Okay, we got it at the back. We're going to yarn over and go through the front of the stitch, making sure that our straggler is to the back of that. Okay, we're pulling through and yarn over and pull through the whole thing again. Pull this little straggler up at the front again. Yarn over, go through the back of the stitch. Okay, we're only going to have to work with this straggler only on this first row here. Well, it's row three, technically. Okay, now run it to the back, yarn over, go to the front of the, of the stitch, yarn over and pull through again. All right, so continue that. And after you've got um, a couple of inches with this little straggler in here, you can just kind of leave it and then uh, cut it off later after you're done. Go to the back. All right, so go ahead and pause your video and I'll meet you back at the end of this row and then we'll work our way across. Okay, we're at the end of row three, going ahead and chaining up two more. Turn, and you're gonna continue back across. You can see that I have this trapped in here, this first um, two thirds here, and then I can just cut this off and know that that little straggler is okay. Or you can continue weaving it in when you're done. So go ahead and continue being sure to get that very first chain going in through the back loop and continuing on. All right, so I'll meet you uh, at the very last stitch that you're going to do and we'll change the color again. Pause your video and I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, so we're gonna change the color once again. I've gone into my last stitch and I've got the three uh, loops on my hook. And instead of pulling through and continuing on, I'm going to pick up my next color. So I'm going to bring my old yarn to the front and then I'm going to put this uh, one, the second, um, the first color back up through here. And then we're going to pull it on through. Okay, so next time um, we're going to chain two up. Now, next time when we go to switch the colors, then this one will come to the front and then this one will go to the back. And then the part that's hanging will get um, trapped and also it'll get hidden That's um, when it's working its way up the edge here. It will get hidden when we crochet around in the very ending on the edging section. So um, now that you've switched your colors back, go ahead and uh, chain up to turn your work and continue in the half double crochet. All right, so I think you have enough to keep going. You want to make sure and um, continue going back to front, 
So back post to front post, or back of the loop to the front of the loop. And uh, you're going to alternate, and let me show you this right here. Okay, so this is the pattern here, and we have, um, this is my main color, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six sections of that. And then in between, we have the second color, which is one, two, three, four, five. So six of the white and five of the green or vice versa. And then whatever you started with, um, it's gonna be your secondary color, which will be the edging. So I'll meet you back in a little bit and we'll go over the edging. So continue on, pause your video and come back. And in case you haven't paused it yet, uh, just showing you going from the next round uh, up to the next color. I'm dropping this um, white here and then I'm picking up the next color. Okay, so now these are going to be twisted together. So next time I'll bring this secondary color back forward. And then anyway, so this one's brought up. I'm going to go ahead and chain and I'm going to continue on until I get to the desired height. So uh, I'm gonna continue on. Mine's gonna be more of a coaster size and go ahead and mark on your video um, uh, what minute you're at. So I'm sure you have to stop it and then continue on for the whole pattern. Uh, or you can continue on with me uh, in a moment and just watch how I finish this off and start the edge. Okay, so we're coming at the end here and if it's a solid, you will um, finish single, uh, I'm sorry, we're coming to the end here, and if you are doing the solid, of course, you're going to go ahead and pull through this last uh, stitch, or you can pull through one more and then cut your yarn and weave that tail in. But if you want to put in another color around the edging, um, what you want to do is change uh, from this last color here. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to change color again. So I'm going to pull this one out. Okay. And we want to pull that original color, um, that original accent color back through. So go ahead and get your three on your hook, grab that um, other color here. I'm going to grab my brown and pull it all the way through. Okay, so now I've got, I've changed my color here. And then um, I'm going to follow the directions. The directions say to chain one. So um, I pulled that one on through, so this is my first chain. Okay, so now that's locking that into place. And now we're going to do three single crochet into the first uh, half double crochet. So um, we want to uh, turn our work here, because that we already did that chain. And then um, single crochet. So single crochet, you're just gonna go through those top two loops here, and then yarn over, pulling it through and then yarn over again and pull through all, both loops. Okay, so that's one yarn over. I'm so whoops. So that's one. Now go through the same uh, two loops here, pull through, yarn over, pull through both of them. One more time. That was two. Whoops. So go through, pull through one loop, yarn over, and pull through both. So now we've got three single crochets in this first half double crochet which is written ch1 for chain and then turn and then three sc in first hdc okay now we're going to single crochet in each half double crochet across to the very last one so here we go so we're going to um uh, single crochet so we're just going to go in those top two loops and single crochet all over the whole thing Sorry, I kept accidentally wanting to do half double crochet because we had been doing so many of them. So we're going to go across and uh, pause your video and I'll meet you back when we get to the end of this row. Okay, so we're going to the very last half double crochet and we're going to single crochet three in here. That's two. Three. And three. 
Okay, and then we're going to single crochet evenly across the end of the rows and we're going to work in the th free loops, these spaces here. So we're going to go through these free loops here because the edge uh, of your work is um, going to feel a little different than it did across the top. This is along the sides. So you see these free loops here? Okay, so you're getting this nice little edge, those three single crochets in each corner, basically. So as you go around, you're gonna make it three single crochets. So go along all the edges, and then when we get over here, uh, I'll show you how to trap that in. Okay, I've got the single crochet in the corner here, and now I'm going to lay this straggler here, the original beginning one, across the top of the panel here that we're working on. And we want to single crochet along. Okay, so you're gonna go into those loops there and crochet along, and then as you're doing it, you're trapping this straggler in here. See, as I pull through, I'm making sure that that loose yarn is staying on top. And then when I grab the next yarn, make sure that this part stays still on top so that kind of peach pink color is staying on top of the actual crocheted work. So we're crocheting along and it will trap it in and just keep going along until it is sufficiently uh, trapped in, I'd say um, several inches. And then you can just cut off the rest after you think that it has been worked in. Okay, so when you get to the end, um, meet me back up and uh, we'll talk about the finish. Okay, our last edge uh, that I've been working across is where we had carried the yarn. And so um, just make sure, and you wanna go underneath all of that and trap in these loose edges here. And just remember that, especially on the, the one where you have the two of them, you can tell where to go along the edging really well because you only had two rows here, so you don't need like four or five stitches uh, in between colors or else you're going to notice your work like growing <laughs> in certain spots and it's going to look like oh, it's, it's billowing. I mean, if you do extra on purpose, you can create a ruffled effect, but that's not uh, what we're doing for this particular pattern here. Okay, so as we come to the end, um, I'm going to go back through this last stitch here. And then um, you can go ahead and pull through here and cut. Okay, and then you can weave in your uh, your last remaining tails here. So these will just get um, get woven in with your hook, or you can use a tapestry needle. And this other yarn needs to be cut. Okay, so after you've woven that in, you have got your nice dishcloth here. Oh, and this is the part that I, see I had some stragglers that I had trapped in. You can uh, hand block this out. That was the um, the back of the stitch, and then you've got your um, your corners here. Um, it will it will even out nicely. This one is not the pattern. The, what you want to look at is these patterns here. So um, let me finish off what this one looks like without the border here. This is my last one on the solid without an edge. And just going all the way through, and then you can just pull that on through and um, I like to lock that in position there, We're just pulling that knot in, and then we'll just weave that on through. And then you've got, uh, this is the striped, it looks striped, but it's actually the solid. And then this is the um, striped one. We've got our striped and our 
solid with the variegated striped uh, as our patterns here. Thank you again for joining me at Good Knit Kisses. It was great. Happy crocheting!